Whoa, okay, listener, you ready for this? California is like seriously diving headfirst into this whole AI regulation thing. No kidding. It's kind of wild, right? Yeah, Governor Newsom just signed, what, like 18 new AI laws? 18? Can you believe that? From a whopping 38 bills. They weren't messing around. Yeah, and he wasn't afraid to use that veto pen either. <laughs> right? Like, remember SB 1047? That one caused a whole uproar. Oh, yeah, that was a big one. But hey, we're here to dig into the ones that made it through, right? The laws that are shaping how California is going to handle AI. Exactly. It's like they're writing the rules for the whole AI game, and it's happening right here in California. Well, you know what they say is California goes, so goes the nation. Yeah, true. That. Yeah. But it makes sense, though, right? I mean, Silicon Valley is basically their backyard. Right. They're living and breathing AI every single day. It's only natural they'd want to get a handle on it. I mean, even Governor Newsom, when he made a statement about it, he talked about harnessing the power of AI, but also you know, being realistic about the risks. Yeah, finding that balance seems to be the key here. Absolutely. So we've got this awesome memo from attorney Mitch Jackson that's going to be our guide today. He's broken down no. all these new laws into 11 key areas, which is great because 18 laws, that's a lot to unpack. It really is. It's a lot to wrap <laughs> your head around. But hey, that's why we're here, right? To break it all down. <laughs> exactly. So let's dive into our first category, AI risk. Kind of a scary name, don't you think? It does sound a little ominous, right? But it's really all about looking ahead, anticipating problems before they blow up. So it's like preventative AI medicine. Exactly. And this is where SB 896 comes into play. This law gives Calorecius a pretty big task. They have to get all the big players in AI, like OpenAI, Anthropic, all those guys together to basically brainstorm all the ways AI could go wrong. Whoa, so like a think tank for AI disasters. Pretty much. Oh. They're going to be looking at things like how AI could disrupt essential services, you know, like power grids, transportation systems, even things that could potentially lead to like mass casualties. Okay, now that is some serious stuff. Yeah, it's not something to take lightly. But it shows how seriously California is taking this whole AI thing. They're not just thinking about today, they're thinking about the future, about the worst case scenarios and how to prevent them. That's actually kind of reassuring. Right. Better safe than sorry. Okay, so moving on from AI disasters, let's talk about something a bit more transparent, literally. Training data. AB 2013 is all about lifting the veil on how AI systems are trained right. 100%. Starting in 2026, AI providers are going to have to be a lot more upfront about the data they use to train their systems. So kind of like a nutrition label, but for algorithm. I like that analogy. Exactly. They'll have to disclose where they got their data, how they used it, how much data they actually use the whole shebang. And here's the kicker. They even have to come clean if they used any copyrighted material, which is huge for creators and artists. Yeah. No more hiding behind vague terms like proprietary data. Nope. It's all about transparency now. So if I'm using, say, a generative AI platform, I could potentially see what kind of data shaped its intelligence. Exactly. That's the idea to give users more control and understanding. Okay, so that's training data. Now let's talk about something everyone's concerned about privacy. How do these new laws affect our personal data in the age of AI? Well, California is taking a pretty hard line with AB 1008. This law basically extends all those privacy rights we already have to cover generative AI systems as well. You know, things like ChatGPT that collect tons of data from users. Right, so if ChatGPT were to accidentally leak my personal info, these new laws would kick in. Exactly. It's all about making sure that the same protections apply whether your data is being collected by a person or a machine. Makes sense. Okay, so we've talked about AI risk training data and privacy. What's next? Well, how about education? California is putting a lot of emphasis on preparing future generations for a world increasingly shaped by AI. So getting those kids coding before they can even tie their shoelaces? Uh -huh. <laughs> Not quite that young. <laughs> but yeah, AB 2876 is all about making AI literacy a core part of education in California. AI literacy. That's an interesting term. What does that actually mean in practice? It's about giving students the tools they need to understand how AI works, its potential benefits, but also its limitations. It's about critical thinking skills applied to this whole world of algorithms and data. So not replacing teachers with robots just yet. Not quite. It's more about giving teachers the resources they need to integrate AI concepts into their existing lessons to help students develop a healthy dose of skepticism and understanding about this technology. That's a relief. I think we need more critical thinking in general these days. I agree 100%. And that's really what AI literacy is all about, equipping people to navigate this increasingly complex technological landscape. Love it. Okay, so we've got AI literacy. Now, how about we define what we're actually talking about? 
AB 2885 goes right to the heart of it, defining what AI actually is, which seems pretty important because AI it can be a pretty nebulous term. Totally. Before you can regulate something, you have to know what it is. Rebecca. Exactly. So what's the official verdict? What is AI according to California? Okay, so get ready for this because it's a mouthful. California defines AI as an engineered or machine-based system that can learn, make decisions, and achieve goals. So the focus is on autonomy, on a system's ability to act independently and have a real impact on the world, both digital and physical. So while my Roomba might be able to navigate my living room without my help, it's probably not quite sophisticated enough to qualify as AI under this definition. Probably not. This definition is aimed at more complex systems, systems capable of higher level reasoning and decision making. Okay, that makes sense. So that's AI risk training, data privacy education, and even a definition of AI itself. We've covered a lot of ground, but there's still so much more to explore. Oh yeah, we're just getting started. We still need to talk about healthcare. Those pesky AI robocalls, deepfakes, even Hollywood is getting in on the action. Hollywood and AI. Now that's a recipe for some interesting conversations, but we're going to have to save those for next time. Oh yeah, we're just getting warmed up. And when it comes to those annoying AI robocalls, California's not messing around. Yeah, those things are the worst, especially after that whole Biden deepfake robocall thing during the last election. Right. Talk about creepy. But that's exactly what AB 2905 is trying to prevent. So does this mean no more robots calling me during dinner? Well, not exactly. But it does mean that if you get a robocall and the voice on the other end is AI generated, they have to tell you up front. Oh, okay. So no more AI pretending to be my long lost cousin. Well, they can try, but they have to be upfront about it. That's good. Transparency is key. Exactly. It's all about giving people the information they need to decide if they want to engage or just hang out. Makes sense. Okay. So we've tackled robocalls, but what about something even more serious, like deep fake pornography? That's some seriously messed up stuff. It really is. It's a huge problem. And it's only getting worse as AI gets more sophisticated. Right. And the potential for harm is just enormous. Absolutely. It can be used to humiliate people, extort them, even to silence them. It's terrifying. So how is California addressing this? Well, they're taking a multi-pronged approach. First, AB 1831 broadens the definition of child pornography to include AI-generated content. So even if no real children were involved, creating or distributing that kind of content is illegal. Exactly. It doesn't matter if it's a real kid or a computer-generated image, it's still illegal. That's good to know. But what about the victims of deepfake porn, the people whose images are being used without their consent? That's where SB 926 comes in. This law specifically targets revenge porn that uses deepfakes, making it illegal to use those kinds of images to harass or extort someone. So basically, if you're thinking about using deepfakes to get revenge on your ex, think again. Exactly. It's not worth it. And the penalties are steep. Good. So that's the legal side of things. But what about the platforms where this content is often shared? What's being done about that? That's a great question. And it's something that SB 981 addresses head on social media companies now have to provide clear and easy ways for users to report deepfake nudes. So no more burying the reporting button in a maze of menus and submenus. Right. And while they're investigating the report, they have to temporarily block the content. And if it turns out to be a deep fake, they have to take it down for good. OK, that's a good step. Yeah. But honestly, it feels like we're playing whack-a-mole here. As soon as we come up with a way to combat deep fakes, someone will figure out a way around it. That's the nature of technology, right? It's a constant arms race. So how do we even keep up? Well, one way is to focus on education, making sure people understand how to spot deep fakes and other forms of AI generated content. And that's where watermarks come in. Watermarks, like the things they put on money. Kind of. But in this case, we're talking about digital watermarks that are embedded in the metadata of an image or video. So it's like a secret code that says, hey, this thing was made by AI. Exactly. And SB 942 requires that all widely used generative AI systems include these watermarks. That's interesting. But what if I don't know how to find the watermark or even what a metadata is? That's fair. Not everyone is a tech expert. But the good news is that there are tools out there that can detect these watermarks for you. Some are even free. So it's getting easier to tell what's real and what's fake online. It's getting there. But it's still important to be vigilant, to think critically about what we see online, and to be wary of things that seem too good to be true. OK, that's good advice. But speaking of things that seem too good to be true, what about those election deepfakes we were talking about earlier? Those have the potential to really mess with our democracy. No doubt about it. And California seems to agree because they passed not one, but three laws 
specifically aimed at combating election deepfakes. Three laws. They must be taking this seriously. They are. The first one, AB 2655, puts pressure on social media platforms to be more proactive in taking down or at least clearly labeling election-related deepfakes. So no more AI-generated smear campaigns slipping through the cracks. That's the goal. And if those platforms don't comply, candidates and elected officials now have legal recourse to force their hand. Oh, wow. Okay, so they mean business. What about the other two laws? All right, so the next one, AB 2839, takes aim at the users themselves. It makes it a punishable offense to knowingly post or share AI-generated deepfakes with the intent to mislead voters. So that funny but obviously fake video of a politician I saw on Twitter. I probably shouldn't share that. Probably not a good idea. And finally, we have AB 2355, which focuses on political ads. Oh, man, political ads. Those are already bad enough without AI getting involved. Tell me about it. Yeah. But this law is trying to bring some much-needed transparency to the process. Any political ad that uses AI-generated content now has to clearly and prominently disclose that fact. So no more sneaking in a deepfake endorsement without anyone noticing. Hopefully not. The goal is to make sure that voters are aware of when AI is being used in political campaigns so they can make informed decisions. Makes sense. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. From robocalls to deepfakes to watermarks, it seems like California is really trying to get ahead of this whole AI thing. They definitely are. And it's not just about protecting people from harm. It's also about ensuring that AI is developed and used responsibly in a way that benefits everyone. Right. It's about finding that balance between innovation and ethics. Exactly. And that's a conversation that's not going away anytime soon. Especially not with Hollywood now getting in on the act. Oh, yeah. Hollywood and AI. That's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> can of worms we're going to have to open up next time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of both exciting and scary at the same time, right? Yep, like, yeah, imagine the possibilities, but also the potential for things to go wrong. Totally. It's like a whole new world of storytelling opening up, but with some serious ethical questions we got to address. Oh, right. Like, what about consent? If they can just create a digital copy of anyone, what's stopping them from putting words in their mouth that they never actually said? Exactly. And that's where these new California laws come in. They're trying to establish some ground rules, some boundaries in this new frontier of AI entertainment. Okay, so walk me through it. What are the main things these laws are trying to do? So AB 2602, that one's all about protecting an actor's right to their own image and voice. Basically, studios can't just create a digital replica of someone like Zendaya without getting her permission first. So no more surprise digital cameos. Not unless the actor agrees to it. It's about giving performers control over their own likeness which makes sense. Oh, totally. Right. But what about actors who are no longer with us? It seems like it would be even easier to exploit their images and voices. That's a really tricky issue. And that's where AB 1836 comes in. This law says that if a studio wants to use the likeness of a deceased performer, they have to get permission from the deceased's estate. So it's like they're trying to respect the legacy of those who are no longer here to speak for themselves. Exactly. It's about preventing the commercial exploitation of someone who can't consent for themselves. That makes sense. But it does raise an interesting question. Who actually owns the rights to a person's digital likeness, especially after they're gone? Ooh, that's a big one, right? It's like a whole new legal and ethical gray area. Yeah. These California laws are really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to figuring all this out. It's kind of mind-blowing when you really think about it. Yeah. But looking back at all these new AI laws we've talked about today, what's the main takeaway? Is California setting a precedent for the rest of the country? I think it's definitely possible. Remember, California often leads the way in tech regulation. And what they do here often spreads to other states. Right, like with environmental laws, California often sets the standard for the rest of the nation. Exactly. So it wouldn't be surprising to see other states follow California's lead on AI regulation. So it's not just about California. It's about shaping the future of AI for everyone. Absolutely. These laws could have a ripple effect influencing how AI is developed and used across industries, not just within California's borders. It's like California saying, hey, world, this is how you do AI, right? Uh-huh. Something like that. But, you know, they're not just laying down the law. They're also trying to foster innovation while protecting people, which is a tough balancing act. Yeah, finding that sweet spot between progress and responsibility. Exactly. And that's a conversation we all need to be part of. As AI continues to evolve, we need to keep talking about these issues, keep asking the tough questions, and keep working towards solutions that benefit everyone. Well said. And on that note, I think we've done our part for today. 
We've explored some pretty complex and thought-provoking topics and hopefully given our listeners a lot to chew on. Definitely. And remember, this is just the beginning. The world of AI is constantly changing, so staying informed is more important than ever. Absolutely. So to our listeners, we encourage you to check out the show notes for links to all the resources we've mentioned today and to keep those critical thinking caps on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into California's AI law explosion. Until next time, stay curious.